All right, today we're gonna to be focusing on another COD improvement video. This time we're gonna be talking about stacking in control. I know I don't do a lot of control videos, but since Rank Play just dropped, I wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of stacking. And obviously you might be trying to get on your point, but your teammates are not, but I really just wanna make this video to really emphasize how important it is to at least get two people on the point uh, when you're capping on that control point, specifically you know those last few final moments uh, when you can really win a round. So before I get into a really good pro example of why it could be so efficient to stack points in control, I really want to take a breakdown of how it works in terms of the number. So let's say we're talking about just uh, capturing the point in general. For one person to cap the entire point, it is 45 seconds, right? So this gets completely halved once two people get on point. So now it becomes 22.5 seconds. Then once three people get on the point, you know, this is divided by three now, it becomes 15 seconds. And lastly, when four people are fully stacking for the entire point to be capped, it is then 11.25 seconds. So the differences here are what makes this really important to see. So obviously from 45 to 22.5, that jump down, is subtracting 22.5 seconds here. So that's the biggest jump that you will see. So that's why it's really important to get, at least get two people on the point once you get a few kills because, you know, solo capping will take so much longer. Now with two people on point, you're cutting that time completely in half, making it now 22.5 seconds to capture the entire point. You know, from that, you go from 22.5 to 15. So that's a, you know, 7.5 second differential. And then lastly, at the end here, uh, this is going to be a three point seven five differential uh from three to four so obviously gradually it diminishes just a little bit and obviously it's better to stack with three people than two people and four people and three people but once you look at the effect that it has on the time place you start to see the differences and what you might actually want to prioritize so definitely having two people on the point because once you make it 45 to 22.5 that is a huge jump but once you go from two to three people and three to four people the differences aren't as drastic so you might want to prioritize more or kills in some situations by you know spreading out the map taking different angles from the hill while the rest of your guys cap or if you instantly get a three or four down and everyone's already by the point you might as well take the time to get to the point because you're right there the enemy is going to have to wait out that respawn timer anyway so you're not going to be able to get kills in that specific scenario so if you're already by the point and you have all those people there you might as well do it but you obviously have to prioritize different things if you're you know pushed out on the map on a cut and you can make sure that you're taking a different angle so everything else is cut off for your team while they stack the point so these numbers are really important here just to digest as someone who's just playing the game you know the biggest thing is you know one to two people that jump is so massive that every time you're having someone on point you might as well just have two people so it's also really important to look at this in terms of just ticks in general so I was basically using those numbers as you know a full cap of the entire point but there's a lot of times where you already have gotten a tick and you've gotten wiped and you have to go back and get two more ticks or you have to get one more tick before you fully cap so in terms of just one single tick let's look at it this way it's 15 seconds for one tick if only one person on the point it then goes to 7.5 and then five seconds and then 3.75 seconds so this is just one tick obviously with one person with two people three people and then a, a full four stack so once again you know 15 to 7.5 this difference is massive minus 7.5 seconds here then it goes to a subtraction of 2.5 seconds from two to three and then lastly minus 1.25 seconds uh, for the difference between three and four people so once again you can see the difference between one and two people is massive and that's the most important thing and obviously from three to four it improves but it doesn't scale as well as that one to two so you can prioritize kills in different situations you know a lot of teams that you'll see in the pro league will triple cap and send one person out to cut off the rest of the, of the enemy team while they're taking a different angle and everyone else is capping the point that seems to be the general consensus unless one once again, like I talked about before, everyone's already by the point and you've already gotten the three or four down. You might as well just converge onto the point. This is specifically in those situations where one person just isn't by the point at all. So he's just going to try and take some space, take a different angle. So, you know, the enemy team, while they're trying to get back to you on the point and contest, they have to worry about a different player and clear that person before they can even get onto that point. So this is the round that I really wanted to break down. This happened yesterday. It was a 
New York Subliners versus Seattle Surge high-rise control. Obviously, you see New York on offense here. And in this break, they go for an A-sided break. And this is, you know, not very common at all on high-rise. So in this situation, they're kind of just trying to fool Seattle a little bit, maybe get a few ticks on A if possible, and then eventually go back to B because, you know, if you can get one or two ticks already on A right at the beginning of the round, that is completely worth off the break. So this is what they're doing here. So you see off this break, they only have one person capping right at the very moment. They're playing skies over towards the B street. He's eventually going to go towards this mid window and basically just play the cross for his team. So anyone on the enemy team, you know, for Seattle here that's playing on this B side, if they cross anywhere towards middle or cross, you know, through this B street, trying to put pick up a flank on that sense, you know, Caesar's going to be getting that information and can kill them while they're trying to cross. And as you see New York here, they have number one capping. Number two, Sib is going to end up going towards A side as well and also start double capping because, you know, just off the break, you just want to make sure that you're keeping the other team honest so they have to worry about different things. If you just instantly go for the double cap, they might see it right away and just instantly try and counter you. He can get some information for Skies and help him out that way and then just instantly get onto the point anyways. You know, you don't have to have two people right away. If you want to get some information or get a kill right before you do it, that's all right too. But eventually it's just so much more beneficial to have these two people capping and possibly getting a tick. The whole reason for this A break is to try and get one tick, maybe even two. If you can get one, great. If you can get two, that's a win off the break right away because obviously you're just really hard to get ticks later on on the A site. So you're eventually going to just work back onto B and then eventually get back to A. But unfortunately in this situation for Seattle, they don't even realize that they're capping towards this A point already and they're double capping it. So it's moving pretty decently fast. And like I said before, once you get that first tick on the A side, you're gonna obviously work for the second one because that was your whole break off. And if you can get two ticks on the A side on this offensive side on high rise, it can get a really, really sketchy scenario for the defense later in the round. So obviously you see here, Seattle, they don't even really notice that the cap is happening. They send three people towards this B side, but no movement or no action is being taken. So, you know, New York is just running away with this. They're just running away with ticks. You know, on the Seattle side, you obviously suspect that, you know, if they don't see anyone towards this B side in, you know, these first 10 or 15 seconds that they would expect something towards the other side of the map. Uh, but it doesn't seem like they're urgent in this sense. So this is what's really confusing about what Seattle's doing here. They're not really urgent about this cap on towards the A side. You know, they've already gotten a full tick. No one's even in a position to take a gunfight on these people towards the A side. And they're just double capping this. And it's just, you know, the tick bar is just going up and up and up. And you know, the first gunfight in the entire round happens as soon as New York is about to get two full ticks on this A point. And that's because Skies was able to move back towards its mid window and help towards the cut like I was talking about before. So, you know, this double cap is happening. They get two free ticks. Now the enemy team on Seattle side is trying to finally get towards the A side, but it's just too late. You know, NYSL has gotten one kill on Kyler, fully flanking. You know, they got another kill on Abuza who was, you know, trying to jump towards bottom blue here. But once again, number four is so close watching that pinch for his team. And with these two kills, it's just so disjointed for Seattle. You know, this is going to be most likely a cap if they can just get one more kill, especially on Brezzi over here. And all they've done is just double cap this. And obviously, like I said before, if Kismet was the only one capping this point, this two ticks would take a full 30 seconds. But because they have two people on the point, it's only 15 seconds. So the way that they're doing this is they win the break. They're just double stacking here. They get the three kills on people trying to wrap from B to A, and they just fully cap A right away and what happens here off of this cap is you know Paco had gotten this kill bottom blue and he's taking this route to go all the way to their side underground and now he can start cutting people towards this B side already from this left side window so all he's doing here is playing kills making sure that he holds the cross for the rest of his teammates and this is just a crazy round because you never see offenses like this on high rise you know Paco gets one kill for it he gets traded trying to push into their base but you know the damage is already done they've already capped the A side point any kills that Paco would have gone on towards this B side was just extra icing on the cake. And now New York can try and actually move and transition towards this B side. You see Kismet, he was already still capping towards the A point. He gets the cap and he gets two free kills on people trying to reinforce this A side and clear that side of the map because the point has already been capped, but the players are still there. So on the Seattle side, you still need to clear that side of the map after the point's capped 
and you know kismet punishes them for it gets two kills and what happens here you know that they're going to be towards this b street side and once again for new york double stacking it after they get three down you know that the enemy team is coming off spawn now you can start instantly stacking the point making sure this tick bar goes up super quick all they needed to watch for their team is b street because as you can see here sib comes off spawn and goes to the right hand side of his spawn instead of head bashing you know going towards the b street with the rest of his team he picks up some area on the map that he can watch so he can relay to his teammates that they don't need to watch it he picks up that mid lane so they don't even need to worry about that mid lane all they need to do is focus on you know this b street and possibly the hop up onto the point from the their side underground and because they know they got three down they see last guy live towards this b street you know skies and hydra are both shooting at him they can get this kill so what do you know they're two stacking after they get a clean four down sib gives up this mid cut in order to get over towards the point to help out his team because instead of covering mid he's gonna have paco stay towards his top propane area and watch over them as they triple stack the points so they get that four down in the comms they're probably going you know stack 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 they're gonna leave paco up top propane to just you know basically just get as many kills as possible while sib makes his way towards the point and paco can watch over them as they triple stack the points so let's see what happens here sib makes his way over after cutting mid you know they don't need to cut mid anymore because they got the four down and so sib's gonna motion over to the point with all of these kills for the new york side he's gonna start triple stacking with his team because they know how important the stack is once they've gotten three or four down so all they need to do is have one person out taking a different angle making sure he's that overwatch player for the team and covering these windows making sure that he just gives the information on where they're coming from that's the biggest thing for this guy who's not playing on the point so if you don't want to four stack because you didn't get a fully clean four down and it's a little bit staggered you can just have a triple stack and then have someone playing this different off angle and make it really annoying for this enemy team trying to get to the point all they need to do is kill kyler who is jumping on the top of the hop wall over here they're triple stacking the instant round win they literally only lose three lives in this entire offense probably the cleanest offense i've ever seen on a control and definitely on high rise control and maybe the cleanest we'll see all year and it's simply because of the double and triple stacks obviously they punished that mistake by seattle not knowing that the a cap was going on but it's really important because you know they were double stacking they were making sure that they were cutting off people to going towards that point they get those few kills start pushing up on the map cut off even more then they transition, get a few more kills because they know information on where the enemy could be off their spawn. They double stack again. They make sure they're cutting parts of the map that the enemy could be. Then they triple stack once they get more kills and it's just a round win. So a really clean control round right there. And this is something that can span all different types of control maps. It's the same type of concepts that go on. It's just obviously the map plays a little bit differently, but the way that you know these caps work out with these stacks and how you might want to play it with a three or four down and if you can get pushed up, cut off some people and then stack the point with two or three people maybe four if you do have the timing for it but the importance specifically of having at least two people capping is so important for this game mode and i figure i'd just at least make a video for it because i see a lot of people in these ranked play matches not getting on the point when they need to uh, or, or just having one person solo capping and it's just not the way that you're going to be able to consistently win offenses on control so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what other types of cod tips that you would like me to talk about and I'll see you guys in the next one.